Welcome to ET Land, and today we are finally going to look at Retro Pocket 4 Pro. And this is very, very nostalgic because my first video is actually Retro Pocket 2, and I really like the fact that they still keep the design language from their previous books in a few years ago from the Retro Pocket 2. And let's open it together with me. I'm getting this 16 bit US this time because that's the closest thing to purple, and I just hate the fact that they cancelled the transparent purple. Anyways, I love that they put matte mix on the box because it feels so premium. I still remember when I first received my Retro Pocket 2, I actually got a broken screen protector and that box was so flimsy so I'm quite pleased by how they improved their packaging. And I'm glad to see that my screen protector is not broken this time. I'm actually quite excited for Retro Pocket 4 Pro this time because first nowadays most of the powerful Android handhelds are big and this is very small and second nowadays we don't usually get parallel joysticks and finally we got something i know retro pocket 3 has been using it but you know it is more powerful this time so i'm quite excited for that and my first impression is that this is so much darker than i expected i mean you may not be able to tell from this footage so i'm going to do a comparison okay so here is a pure white charger you can see that it is quite gray and if i compare it to the photo from the official website here that is definitely not the color it intends to be. I mean, I know how a 16-bit Super Famicom looks like, and I'm pretty sure that this is not the color. It is a pity that I can't capture how dark the shell it is in reality, but I can tell you it is definitely not the color they show on their official websites, and this is not the first time they have this kind of color issues. Well, it's not a big problem, it's just, just not what I expected, and I just wish them to have a more accurate color calibration anyways. And when we look at the other parts, um, the biggest change is the plastic they use because obviously the finish is different from what we used to have from the Retro Pocket 3. The other parts are pretty much like how it used to be on the Retro Pocket 3. Okay, so let's look at the IOs. At the top of this device, we have the L1, L2, L1, L2 buttons, and the volume, power button, fan, and we also have a mini HDMI port on it. The travel of the triggers is a bit longer this time, but it is acceptable to me. At the back, we have another fan, and I actually really miss the finish of Retro Pocket 3 because this feels a little bit cheaper, and I like how matte the Retro Pocket 3 was. But anyway, this is a super flat, small and rectangular device which is actually very suitable for people with small hand to hold it. Although the home return, selects and stop buttons are located a little bit low, they are still very accessible. Although the joysticks are quite small, they are very responsive and they have enough travel for you to control. The D-pad is sturdy but responsive, it doesn't wiggle but it is also easy to press. In fact, this is actually one of my favorite D-pad I have ever used. The ABXY buttons are relatively hot, but it is not difficult to press, and I'm pretty sure it will get a lot softer after playing for a while, just like what we used to have on Retro Pocket 2. Not the plus, but 2. And I really like how reachable every button is. I watch other reviews saying that this device is not suitable to play modern games or games that highly require you to use joysticks or both joysticks because their location are too low. However, I cannot agree with that because I think this is just a matter of how you hold and how you use your joysticks. You don't need to use your fingertips to control your joysticks. You can use the lower part of your fingers. And since the D-pad and the ABXY buttons are located almost right above of them, it is actually easier for me to control the joysticks and the D-pad, ABXY buttons, all of those things at the same time. Now let's talk about the screen. 
It is reported that the screen of Retro Pocket 4 and 4 Pro are green, and yes, it is. When we start up the device, we see that the logo is kind of green. But after starting up, it is fixed by the software, so I think it is not a big concern for anyone. Retro has been long enough in this Android handheld market that makes them very stable in terms of software. They have this launcher, like it or not, that helps you to pre-install the apps, and they also are very stable in terms of the Google Play surface and YouTube. They don't have these kind of errors and I don't have any problem logging into the Google Play surface. And the key mapping function is very mature too. Fun fact, actually I helped them to develop their key mapping feature in the past while they first launched it onto the Retro Pocket 2 Plus. I actually helped them to calibrate the mouse function which was not on the Retro Pocket 2 and because it was not a touchscreen at that time, they actually needed that function. And I made many suggestions on how they should make their mouse mode in order to make it usable. Unfortunately, right after that, they had some changes in their human resources and the people I used to work with no longer stayed in Retro and Retro just decided to ghost me after that. Okay, sorry for the sidetrack and let's go back to the review. I am fully aware of the trigger problems reported on Twitter. For those who don't know, this is actually a problem with the spring inside the trigger and I personally haven't experienced anything like that. I will make a follow-up report if there is anything like that happen. And if there is anything happened to your triggers, which your unit was shipped before January 30th of 2004, Retry actually provides 2 years of warranty for your triggers and you should contact their customer service for the replacement. They will ship you the replacement triggers. While I was testing the Retro Pocket 4 Pro for Xbox Cloud Gaming and Steam Link because I want to see if it is comfortable enough to play those modern games on it, I found the Retro Pocket 4 Pro was weirdly smoother to play remote play Steam Link and Xbox in comparison to the Odin 2, and it is almost as fast as the Iron Nail Pocket Air, so I was curious and I did a Wi-Fi speed test. I have to say all of them are connected to the same Wi-Fi and while I do the test, I turn off the Wi-Fi for other devices so that it will not jam the Wi-Fi connection. So you can see this Wi-Fi speed test here. The Wi-Fi speed test I'm using is the one that we can use from Google. So you may wonder how the download speed would affect you in cloud gaming or streaming. It's actually how fast information can transfer to you. So it affects things like how long it takes to download a file or something. And it also affects how smooth the game it will be through the streaming. While latency measures how quickly you can get a response from the server, low response time can be very important for real-time games, especially for online gaming. So these two items are the things I'm looking at, and when you look at the comparison of these three devices, which I'm sorry they are too small to look at, but you can see that the download speed of the Odin 2 is like half of the download speed of Retro Pocket 2, and of course, the Iron Nail Pocket Air has a higher download speed. Both latency of the Retro Pocket 4 and the Odin 2 was 7ms, while the latency of the Iron Nail Pocket Air was 14. There is one more feature that is not available on other devices, but we can use on the Odin 2 to speed up the Wi-Fi connection, which is the Dual WLAN acceleration. So let's see if that helps. So yes, after turning on this feature, it is obviously faster than it used to be in comparison. However, when we look back, the result from the Pocket 4 Pro is still a lot slower than that. And of course, it was half of the Iron Nail Pocket Air's download speed. So I hope this piece of information would help those who are interested in cloud gaming or streaming or Steam Link, whatever, that requires you to use a faster download speed. With that being said, I also enjoyed my time playing Xbox Cloud Gaming a lot on my Retro Pocket 4 Pro. However, if your eyesight is not too well, this is going to be too small for you because I also find it a little bit small, although my eyesight is very well. 
So yes, I think we are kind of sacrificing the screen size for the portability. It is hard to define which is more important because it is up to your decision. Though since the screen of Retro Pocket 2 is very vibrant and based on the rumors they were from the iPhones, so they are actually quite visible and clear. The last thing I want to talk about is the speaker because the volume is not scaled properly. It may be a little bit difficult to tell from the video, but in reality when you raise the volume over 50%, it suddenly gets very loud, but if you lower the volume to lower than that to 50%, suddenly it gets a little bit difficult to be audible. And I think it is rather a software problem instead of hardware problem because we can see that the speakers are sounding very clear and it has no problem to make sounds. Maybe there is a software fix for this issue but I don't know whether they are going to do anything for that. Anyways, this is not a major issue and this is just for your interest. And I would like to wrap up my first look review here. It has been 10 minutes and I think it is too long for the first look. And I'm sorry that I'm not focusing on its performance and emulation for this video. I'm going to do a follow-up review on its performance and emulations. So let's start with the things I like about the Retro Pocket 4 Pro. First of all, it is light, it is more, and the Joy-Con are located parallelly, which is something we can't find recently. And it is a very well-balanced device because like, they have experience for a few years, so they know what they are doing. And you know, they have the launcher that has been prepared for all their players, and they also have the Google Play service being very stable and without much hiccups and stuff like that. So those are the things I appreciate a lot. Nevertheless, the Wi-Fi connection is fast enough so that we can play Xbox Cloud Gaming and streaming, which is a very important part to me too. And now let's move on to the parts I don't like. First, I still think the shell is a little bit too dark. It may not be able to tell from the video, but in reality, when you look at it, this is just too dark for me. Second, just like I mentioned, the speakers, uh, the volume are not scaled proportionally, so I wish that there is a fix to that so that I can kind of turn down the volume without being inaudible. And there are two more things that is not the thing I don't like, but something I wish. First, I wish it is a Snapdragon device because we all know that the upper end of the emulators are going to run better on Snapdragon devices rather than that of Dimensity. And second one, I wish that we can have two more buttons that are mappable so that we can use it for other functions like Turbo and stuff like that. And yeah, that's pretty much about this video. I'm glad that I made it before I get super busy at work. So this is going to be a stock video for next week because now is the 4th of February and I'm probably going to release it on Friday or next Saturday. But anyways, thank you very much for supporting my channel and stay tuned for more. Bye!